um, don't have Lee's China, you know, they probably and, or Doc's place. I guess they can't make up their mind. If you guys know this place, <laughs> let me know. Someone obviously someone does. And it's 4 p.m. here, wherever that is. Um, so here's a billboard, and it just happened to be blank. And we want to put some text on there. So we want to put it in perspective. Now, I could just tilt it, but it's not going to match properly. So this is the nice thing about Vanishing Point. It makes us, you know, where we can put logos, we can put text, we can put all kinds of things. So let's create a text layer. So I'm going to grab my type tool, and that is massive. Let's drop the size down a little bit, maybe about a 14, might be a little more reasonable. There we go. Okay, here we go. Let me make that so we can actually read what it says here. And I'm a terrible typist, as you can see. Oh, there we go. Two of those. All right, you don't need teeth to eat our beef. That's a good slogan for this restaurant. Of course, it's takeout only right now. Uh, let me just go in here and I'm going to adjust the type. Oh, you know what? This is a good time to show some new features that you guys may not be aware of. Um, but in Photoshop 2020, they expanded the properties panel. So let me just close this down and I'm going to shut down the type because I was going to go into the type panel. But if you go into properties, we actually get a lot more type options in here. Now, if you hit this little thing underneath, it brings up the options. And in fact, everything that you would see in the type panel is actually here now in the properties panel. I don't know if you guys knew this or not. So it makes it a lot easier, you know, to do things that suggest the kerning here, the letting, sorry. And uh, let me drop this down a little bit. So you can see we can adjust the sizes. Let's make it 10. So there's a lot of different things we could do here. Let's change the color. Maybe we'll go something, I don't know, just like a blue, just kind of for fun. And okay, so here's the thing. I want to apply this type. Now there's a new way to apply the type as well in 2020. If I just move away, see how you see that I-beam cursor? And then as I move away, it turns into a regular uh, move tool. If I click away, that deselects the type. It's actually that easy now. And so let me go here and I'm just going to move this up. And that was another thing too, is with the move tool, if I double click, it now turns into the type tool. So these are uh, just nice little things that a lot of people just don't know. If you've been using Photoshop for a long time and you know you just haven't really been trying these things out, you know, they're just useful little things that Adobe adds. All right, so what we want to do is we make this type fit on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rasterize this type. So I'm going to right click on the name. If you didn't see what I'm doing, just right clicking here. And I'm just checking to make sure you guys can see everything on the screen. It takes about 10 seconds to reload. Okay, good to know, good to know. All right, so if I um, rasterize this type, so what it's doing is just turning it into pixels. So what I want to do is I want to copy this. So I'm going to hit Control A, that is Command A on Mac, to select everything. And this is the layer with the type. So if I hit Control X, that's going to cut it. So now it's sitting in the clipboard. And uh, so what we have here is just a blank layer. But I do want a blank layer. And this is a big tip when you're working in Vanishing Point. If you're going to be adding anything inside of this Vanishing Point, which does perspective for us, create this new layer first and this is going to just give you so much more flexibility a lot of people don't realize that you can work in layers and vanishing point so we're going to start in this layer and now i want to get the perspective right for this so i don't have to you know figure it out so if we go under the filter under the filter menu is the vanishing point and let me guys know right here in these comments here have you guys ever used vanishing point before say you know just say yeah i have or no i haven't um, and here's Vanishing Point. So we're going to click on it, and this takes us into a new workspace. And um, counting two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Okay, so it's about a twenty. Wow, now it's about a thirty-second delay. Just so you guys know. Um, that's the delay we're working with here. All right, so <laughs> here we go. So now we're in the vanishing point filter. 
what I want to do is I want to define that surface. Um, and Sandy rasterize it. What it does is it turns text into pixels. Um, and the reason we want to turn text into pixels is because when it's a, a font, you can't distort it and do um, some things with it like you can. Once it's rasterized, it's treated like a photograph where you can warp it, distort it, paint on it, stretch it. You can do more to it. All right, so what we want to do is we want to set the angles on here. So we're just going to click on the corner, and you'll see that this tool up here on the left is selected. The and this is going to be on by default. This is going to be the first tool, and we're going to go here. So I'm going to give you another tip because I love tips. If you hold down the X key, you can zoom in so you can get nice and precise and click there. And if I release, it just goes back to full view. So I'm just going to go to here. I'm going to click on there. And why don't we zoom in again, hit the X key, and see how that just lets us go in here. OK, so a couple of things have happened. One, we now see this grid. When we add that fourth point, what it does is it closes it out and creates a plane. This is just a, poly, a polygonal plane. Too many Ps there. Um, and in what it, and when you see here that it's blue, that means it's good. If you see yellow, it means it's, it's sort of okay. And if you see red, it means that it's not okay. And what we're doing is we're telling Photoshop this is the surface. And by the way, you can extend this beyond if you want. Look at that. You know, we can make it bigger. It doesn't matter. We had just created that plane. And so this is useful, you know, if you're working on multiple surfaces. You know, we could create multiple planes. Any of these surfaces here, we could create one here if we wanted. We could create another one. Um, in fact, I'll show you how you do it. Just grab the plane tool, click here, go there. And this would probably be a good time to hit the X, but I just want to quickly show you. And then I click there, there's another plane. So you can set, you can create them. Why don't we just, just for fun, I'll create one up here. And what I'm doing is I'm just following that parallel on that window. Let me hit the X key so you guys can see. So here it might be complicated but if i follow those windows i know those windows are going to be right and i want to go to a vertical line so i can follow that vertical line i'm going to take it down to another horizontal line and see what i'm doing i'm just following those lines and it creates that perspective for you and then once i've done that you know of course i can drag this out and now i can just cover that whole surface but what i did is i looked for those nice horizontal and those vertical lines so I could easily create that plane. And what we've done is we're defining these surfaces now as a 3D surfaces. We could do it all kinds of different places here. Um, but let me show you what we want to do now. So what I want to do is I want to bring my type in. Now, if you remember, I cut it. That's Control um, X. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So we Control C is copy. Control X is to cut. So we're, it's in the clipboard. So we want to add it. So Control or Command V, and we paste our type in here. So this is where Vanishing Point gets good. If I go into that, it snaps in there, and you can see it follows that perspective. I can go down here. Watch this. I could do it in there if I wanted, or I could go in here. Now, of course, we can resize this, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let me bring it into where I want to put it in the billboard. And um, now that we're in the billboard, I want to resize this. So I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to grab this tool here. Did I grab the wrong tool? I grabbed the wrong tool. There we go. That's the transform tool here. Sorry, guys, I haven't done this in a, in a minute. And, uh, and I'm going to go here. So in case you haven't realized, when I do these, um, I don't prepare these like I do a regular session. They're more kind of, I'm kind of winging it a little bit, but I feel that it's, I don't know, it just feels more kind of real. I don't want to come with a canned presentation. Um, but you can see here, now I can resize it. Now you can flip and flop. Um, flipping does that, makes it go mirror image, and then the flop will flip it upside down. So, you know, we've able to do this with type, but this also works for other things too, you know, such as, um, you know, textures and logos and, you know, there's all kinds of things we can do. We can also clone. We can grab the clone stamp tool here. And if we wanted, you know, we could just go down and sample and, you know, and just start to clone in there. It's probably not going to work on this layer because 
there's nothing on this layer but the type so I'd have to probably go up there and do it yeah see I could grab that type and I could paste but of course we're posting onto a blank layer here so you know so it would have to be within that area for it to work because we're on that blank layer so let's apply this blank layer just click or click okay and now we've applied it okay so why did we want to put this on an extra blank layer because now we can turn it on or off we've got flexibility I could you know control U if I want to change the color you know we've got just this kind of flexibility now that we wouldn't have had had we put it right on the layer there and also we can do things with the blending modes so if we could go here we could try some different blending modes you know so it would maybe look a little bit more realistic yeah in this case it's not really a lot of texture or anything on that billboard so you know we're not going to get a lot with it maybe overlay sometimes yeah so that's how we can do that now here's the thing though if we want to do more let me show you something like so I'm going to create a brand new layer and with this brand new layer I'm going to grab the library and I'm going to grab something I don't know let's do the Photoshop Cafe logo so I'm going to just drag this out let's drag it down it's a little big and I'm just going to put it in here so I'm just going to hit enter okay so there's a the Photoshop Cafe logo control A control C to copy it hopefully this works with a smart object let me rasterize it just in case so I'm just going to right click here and I'm just going to rasterize this just to be sure so control A selects all control C copies it let's get rid of it and now we're going to work on another layer so here's where this gets good is if I go back into the vanishing point where this gets good I think it's already pretty good but if we go into filter here and then we go back into vanishing point look what happens it remembers our grids so we don't have to recreate these each time so that means that if we want to work with multiple objects in here we can do that control V to paste it and I can drag it and look at this it snaps to that plane or we can put it in there we can put it in there so why don't we put it in here it's obviously you know really big so let's go in to our free transform scale it down a little bit bring it up and look at that Photoshop Cafe so now Photoshop Cafe is open for business and you don't need teeth to eat our beef all right I'm going to show you one more thing with finishing point so remember I talked about cloning and stuff I can't clone on a blank layer because there's there's nothing to uh, clone so let's select the photo itself now we're going to go back under the filter and then we're going to go down to vanishing point once again and now if you wanted to do this non-destructively by the way I would just duplicate the layer um, and then just do it on a top layer I believe it works with smart objects um, as well that's something I would have to check in a second but I don't remember to be honest maybe some of you guys know let me know and so, so if I wanted to do some cloning here um, what do we want to clone maybe some of this up here so we want to get some of this texture so I'm gonna hit the alt of the option key with the clone stamp and that's gonna enable me to clone a source so I'm selecting that source see that and if I wanted to get rid of the Photoshop cafe I could just go in here and just you know obviously it's a mess but that's how you could clone uh, working in that perspective but see how I can take it up here or I can take it into other parts now so that's a nice thing so I could go in here and I could start to clone in there so that's just kind of you know showing you yeah you know, it looks a bit weird just because of the scaling and stuff but that's essentially what we could do so if I wanted to go up here clone that and just turn that into a white spot I could I could go up here you know so I think that just kind of whoops let's not do it there but it's just kind of handy because you know you can grab things from different parts of the photo and that enables you to uh, to just kind of clone and just do some kind of cool things on there so anyway let me get out of here and so that's essentially how we would work there inside of um, vanishing point let me compare this to a smart object just so I can see if it does work in a smart object or not 
And no, it does not. So that answers that question. All right. Any uh, any questions there, guys? Let's have a look what we've got. I'm going to go back over some of these and drop your questions in there. If you've got nothing about this. And when I asked you guys about this, nope, nope, never heard of it. Yesterday, in fact, was Connie. Ace Nothing said, yep, Lou has used it. Susan's used it lots of times, so you're probably fresher on it than I am. Uh, Nick's not used it. Uh, Larry uses the clone stamp and does a better job than what I just did there, too. Uh, sorry, I didn't do a good job of the cloning. Uh, yes, you've used it. Um, nope, all the time. Didn't know it was there. Nope. I've used Vanishing Point. Tracy says she's in but not in a long time. Yeah, something we used to use a lot more just than lately. It's not doesn't work any better. It's just I think as new features come in, sometimes we forget about some of the older ones. Um, Dave is used a bit not too well. Sandy, no. X key, great tip. Thanks, you got it. Um, did not know that. X key, never used out of focus, just reload. Yep, if you're out of focus, just reload. Um, let's have a look. This is a useful, never thought of that. Keep perspective on clone. Will it work with images? Yes, it will work with images, cars and cameras. Um, you got it. You got it, Fred. All right. Mike. Nope. And Andrew. Seen it, but never used it. All right. Well, hopefully you do. You know what? I'm going to refresh on my laptop. And because right now it's like super, um, my camera's a little fuzzy right now. So let's do that. Resetting it. And ah, nice and sharp. So thank you, Russ, for that tip. All right, guys. So I think... Once again, you guys have any questions, drop it in there, but we're going to move on to our next technique. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put this car into motion. Um, this is a car I shot in a parking lot. I could go into a whole story about this, which I won't, um, but it was, uh, it was an interesting photo shoot. <laughs> Where, yeah, it just, if you guys ever want to know, ask me. Uh, <laughs> all right, so here we go. What we've got essentially is a car in a parking lot, and I want to make it look like this car is in motion. So what we're going to do here is just copy it to a new layer, and you can see yeah, I just masked it out quickly. The wheels are not done very well, but it doesn't matter. And I, I don't want to go into cutting. I just use a quick selection tool. In fact, I can probably do it in one click now. Let's have a look. Grab a selection tool, any selection tool, just choose select subject. And yeah, look at that. It's pretty good. And then if I use my quick select brush with the Alt Option key, boom, boom, boom. I've got that selection there. And then all I need to do is just create a mask. All right, so essentially what I did here. So what you want to do is make sure you have a copy of it. Now, the reason I want to have a copy um, I stashed my fender in the boot. That's funny. All right. So what I want to do is give it a little bit of a blur here. So we're going to blur everything. So let's go filter blur. And then we're going to do a blur, which causes everything to just smudge to make it look like it's in motion. And of course that would be motion blur. And if we go here, we can still see it's a parking lot. Maybe I'm racing a little bit in the parking lot, but what we're going to do is we're going to increase it little bit more let's go even more let's just go to so we can't make out what it is anymore and now it's just we could be on the highway this could be the countryside everything is just flashing by you know we've got a little bit of a thing up there if we go more you know these will just completely disappear into just you know we're going really fast now let's not go that fast i'm keeping it about i'm gonna say about there is keeping it under the speed limit what do you guys think am i over the speed limit there and uh, let's have a look so I'm gonna click OK now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this forward so we get the little bit of a motion blur trailing behind the car so we just move it to here and so you know this is just kind of things in motion now this is not gonna be perfect this is a tutorial 
um, you know, where I'm just really showing you guys how to use these techniques. So there's no driver in the car. There's a lot of things we could call out. I could have done a better job of the selections, but all of this is unimportant except for what we're learning here. Um, now, if you wanted to make these windows look a little bit more like there was actually something in there, um, what we could do is just select the windows here just to kind of show you what, what you could do. Let's not take the mirror out. And I would just do this in each of these areas here where you want to get the window. I'm not going to do it on a mall. And I'm going to select here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply hit the Control Delete, which is the backspace. And all that does is it cuts everything out. Now, of course, what it's going to do is it shows a little bit too much behind it. So let me just add this. I'm getting a little bit more carried away than I normally would. Um, but I just want to show you as many techniques as I can. So what we're going to do is grab this magical tool here. It's called the Object Selection Tool. And with that Object Selection Tool, I could go around here. And wow, that did a tremendously bad job of that. I guess it doesn't work well on masks. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> let's use the Quick Selection Tool. And there's our selection. Or I could have just chosen Select Reselect, actually. And that would uh, that option there that would bring it in all right so anyway so I've got that selection and this is what I would do is I just create a new layer on top and then you're just gonna fill that with you know we're gonna put a little bit of green or something in there because it's a slightly tinted window you know just grab the color a little bit and this is basically how you fill in windows and then you do that and then you just drop the opacity and sometimes just dropping opacity down a little bit is enough to make it look like there's some glass in there. And we can also play around with different blending modes. Like see what happens when we go into things like overlay or I think even lighten looks good. And see what it's doing is it's putting the impression that there's actually glass in there and it's not just a hole. All right, so let's focus on the tutorial now. Let's go back. What we've got a problem here is we've got this car going down the road and it's skidding down the road at a very high rate of speed. Um, in fact, it's probably going to crash because these wheels are not spinning. So we want to make the wheel spin. Make sure the layer is selected. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go under our filter. And under our filter, we've got different types of blurs here. Now, one of them is the blur gallery. This is a newer, I say newer, um, as in... You know, it wasn't in Photoshop CS6. It came in CC. And they slowly added them. Started with Field, then Iris, and Tilt Shift were the first ones. Then they added Blur and Spin. So let's look at the Spin Blur. We now go into another one of these workspaces. See, here's our workspace. And we could change the different types of blurs, by the way, if we wanted here. But I like using the Blur Gallery for different feel for a lot of different things because. What this does is it is non-destructive and we can keep working easily. So I'm going to click on this pin and I'm going to drag this into the middle of this wheel. Now obviously it's too big so I'm going to squish it down and let's take the sides and we're going to squish the sides and here but there's no writing or anything on the tire so I don't really need to spin the tire. Although, uh, I see a little tread on there. Okay, let's go up. Okay, so we're going to spin the spin the tires as well. Um, and let me just go see if we can get this a little bit better. Now, you could spend a bit of time and just make sure you get this absolutely perfect. But uh, for the rest of this, now watch this. If I pull down, see what it does is it spins just the center. And as I pull it out, that spreads how much the spin goes. So I'm going to pull the spin, of course, all the way out because I want to affect the entire wheel. And this little thing here enables us to change the rate of the spin. So if you just wanted to have a, just a very, very slight blur, you could go there. Or if you want to go propeller style, go up there, and that gives us a much, much faster spin. Um, in this case, we probably don't have to go that much. Maybe somewhere in here is going to look good. And of course, that's entirely up to you guys how much you want to spin that. Uh, so that's one. Now here's the nice thing. We can actually add this over here. And let's add a second one. And see that? We can add a second one. And I'm just clicking on these edges. 
just getting it now if it's oval and it's not quite straight if you go here you can rotate this see that I'm just dragging outside it to kind of rotate it and then you can do that to find the right uh, kind of angle that you want let's go up over the wheels just a little bit and if you grab that edge by the way you can move it all together which I probably should have done before and these dots enables us to change the shape and you can see we're able to add that blur that spin blur right there and of course we can preview it and then just click OK to apply and there we go now we've put our car into motion it's a drone car <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I guess with the spinning the uh, the props there. Yep. Oh, brother, the speed limit. Oh, bother. Oh, bother. Yep. Do you keep the speed limit, Tracy? Don't answer. All right. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is a couple more things. While we're into the filter, before I get to that, there's another fun thing here, and that is the tilt shift. So you've seen those photos where things look like little miniatures um, work really well on drone pictures. This is one of my drone pictures. Um, I look forward to the day soon when I can be back out here, you know, shooting these kind of pictures again. You know, right now there's none of these boats are going. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make it look a little bit more like a toy, like a miniature. And we can do that under the same filter. If we go under the filter here, and then under this filter, we go into Blur Gallery. There's another one called Tilt Shift. So I'm going to click on the Tilt Shift. And just before I go on, there's a quick question there. Uh, can you mask that effect um, out of the blur of the calip calipers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you could. And how? let me just answer that question before I close that out. Uh, but essentially, um, how you would mask that rod? is you would convert that to a smart object first and then when you apply it you can mask out the smart object and in fact what I'll do just to show you how that works is I will do it on this picture as we're doing it so I'm just going to convert to a smart object right click on the name convert to smart object you'll see that little icon in the corner and now whenever we apply a filter that filter is automatically going to be a smart filter and and you'll see when we're done about that so let's go back to our tilt shift and here we go so the tilt shift gives us a slice of focus so if we look at it here we can see we've got some different areas I can click in the middle and drag up or down and right where I am is gonna be in focus so if I click here on the boat notice it's sharp and it gets blurry on the outside now we can make that area of focus thinner by just dragging those points and then this is the fall off between this the dotted line will slowly blend see how it will slowly blend it all the way up there so we can adjust how much fall off we want so if we want it to fall off very quickly we can or if we want it to fall off more slowly we can just drag it out and then by doing this and playing around with this we can get in there and create our miniaturization effect and so for something like this, we might be pushing it way out here, or we might be in here. We want to make this part here more of the toy. So you can see what we're doing there. And the reason that this makes it look like that miniaturization, I'll tell you how it works. Let me just drag that out a little bit more. And we're going to click OK to apply it. Now, the way this works is really simple. Is It just makes it look like a macro, because in real life, um, with a larger object, your depth of field is going to just kind of drop off at a different rate, usually um, a slower kind of a rate. You know, you've got your foreground is going to be sharp, your background is going to be blurry. Whereas when you work with a macro lens, it tends to create a more focused area of focus where things just fall off very, very quickly. And then that's what gives it that miniaturization effect because it makes it look like those things are, are smaller just because of the the way the depth of field works is just not what we're used to in real life. Like you would never see this in real life. You'd never get a fall off like that from something that far away unless it's really close and it's really small, which is why this effect works. So it's, it's, it really is just a trick. Now, when we were talking about masking, uh, Rod 
asked about can we mask the effect now this is a different filter than the spin blur but it works the same so when we work with a smart filter you get a layer mask here and see that mask is black oh, sorry that mask is white so what we want to do is just select that mask and then if we grab a brush and we set the color the foreground color here to black now we have a brush and as of all masks if you want to get rid of the effect you just paint and see what it does is it paints away that effect wherever we paint so we could go like this and just really change this you know just painting across there and we're changing this it doesn't look like a miniaturization anymore it's becoming a completely different kind of style of picture so now the background just looks soft and out of focus looks more like a a photo with a little bit more uh, shallow a little shallower depth of field and if you want to go back we just click on here turn the eye on set that to white with that brush select that mask there and of course we just paint it back and we just paint back that filter there we go so you can um, decide you know where you want to do it you can target it if there's a little bit you just want to like maybe just that little corner here if it was falling out of focus and you wanted to keep that sharp you could do that you could fine tune it and just like we did you know if you wanted to get rid of that blur on the logo or whatever we could just click there and do that as well all right, so what do we got here for questions here? Uh, plead the fifth. <laughs> of course you do, <laughs> Tracy. Um, love the tilt shift. Me too. I'm not good at getting it right. Yeah, Donna, it takes a little bit of practice. Um, so what I would recommend, um, you know, when you're creating this tilt shift effect is just experiment a little bit and just try it like I did. You know, just try moving it to different places. Maybe make the area of focus a little thinner maybe make it fall off a little slower or a little closer and just play around with it until you get the effect um and the more you do it the more you're going to start to you know just see because certain photos look better you know different ways you know but also another thing that's really important is you want to make sure the photos a little bit from above like this shot is a drone is perfect for this because it's always shooting from above and when you're shooting from above it's more natural because if you were shooting uh you know like a model or something like that a lot of the time that's the kind of viewpoint you'd be looking at it because you're big it's small you know yeah you could get down and in there but uh, you know to sell the effect a lot of the time you're looking down on it because you're taller or larger than that object so when something's underneath you it always makes it look smaller whereas above you it makes it look bigger all right any questions sure glad you didn't buy a tilt shift lens years ago so much more precise and controllable yeah but you know tilt shift lenses are fun um and i actually got the the one i used was the lens baby one uh, which is actually a lot of fun and it's not that expensive um i forget what they called it it was a sweet sweet 35 or something like that i forget the actual name of it um and i have shot some stuff of that and it is fun it's a fun fun kind of lens to play around with but anyway all right what do we got here all right before we do this no we're not even going to go to that i got a challenge for you guys how many of you like challenges let me know if you want a challenge and if you want me to start adding these challenges and don't just say yes because i asked i mean if you really do uh, let me know and if you're like no I'm good I just want to sit back and watch the tutorial and hang out then that's cool too so um, let me know in the comments I'm just gonna have a glass of water while you guys um, respond because it takes a little while the lens baby was the one you wanted that's awesome and Yep, and that's the type of effect you prefer to do manually. That's cool. Tracy, me. Uh, Tracy wants a challenge. Russ wants a challenge. All right, so we're going to start off with a, a, just a, a simple challenge. And uh, it seems easy, right? What we're going to do is we're going to memorize the tools inside of Photoshop. Now, there's a toolbar 
let me show you something in case you didn't know. This little arrow here enables you to go double column. That's how Photoshop used to always be. And for the longest time, I worked this way. I actually prefer working this way, but a lot of the time I will do this for tutorials because it looks like everyone else's toolbar. But for me, I actually prefer it like this. Um, love to know what you guys prefer. But here's the challenge we're going to have. It's going to speed you up so much if you just remember the keyboard shortcut for the tools. I mean, maybe the tools you're not using much, it doesn't matter so much. But look at on here. So I'm going to challenge you. Look on here and look at the five tools that you use the most that you have not memorized these uh, keyboard shortcuts. Now just take a screen capture of this or um, you know just come back the replay will be up 30 minutes after we're done so it'll be here um, it's also in our Facebook group if you guys are in the Facebook group um, it'll be there if you're not in the Facebook group you can easily join just look go into Facebook and search for Photoshop Cafe and it's called Photoshop Cafe um, what is it Photoshop oh, let me show you let me go here really quickly Facebook so I want to challenge you to learn those five keyboard shortcuts by next week that you use the most. And um, let me show you if I go and search for the groups, this is it here. So if you go onto Facebook and ah, political nonsense all over the Facebook. Um, but anyway, um, if you go in here, no offense <laughs> to Robert, by the way, just, you know, I mean, in, like, I'm not even looking at what the story is. I'm just tired of politics at the moment um, but anyway um, it's the way the United States is at the moment but here it is Photoshop cafe photo art tutorials and challenges so just put in there and just type Photoshop cafe and you'll see a Photoshop cafe art tutorials and challenges that's a group there click on it it'll send a um, an invite I'll accept you guys and you can be part of that and this is also in there so if you're looking for that so how many of you are going to do that? How many of you are going to commit to learn those five tools? If you know them all except for five, learn those five. If you're an overachiever, learn them all. You can do a vertical, of course, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hang on. I think you're asking a different question here. Please challenge me. Okay. Only a landscape effect. No. Um, the tilt shift can work vertically as well. You can rotate that. So um, it'll work vertical or remember. There's a few you can't remember. Okay. So overachievers, learn them all. Um, regular people, just learn five which means you know basically one a day take the weekend off but if you learn one of these each day you're gonna have this memorized just in a couple of weeks and think about you know what that's gonna do for you for all the years going forward in Photoshop now there's a couple of things on this tool that I'm not showing on this couple of little tips uh, if we look on here say for example the M key is our marquee so if I hit the M key it's gonna select the marquee but we know there's things underneath there there's different types and a lot of these have different types so here's the, the trick hold down the shift key and then hit the M key again and now it becomes elliptical see how we can cycle between them so that's uh, kind of a useful thing and as far as it going down and grabbing the single columns no it doesn't because there's no keyboard shortcut you can see there's the, the shortcut but I mean it's not that very often anyone's using the single columns they're super useful when you do but it's not an everyday task and you know just like W here so we hit the W there and if we hit the shift at W see now it cycles between different tools and if we open it up we can see there's three tools there and when you see the W there it means it's gonna cycle now if you really did want to be able to cycle into the single column you could set them up in the keyboard shortcuts you can modify those and in different things like the pen tool so this is gonna toggle between these three gradient so I think you guys get the idea. And then of course the X key is going to flip the foreground background colors, which is the X. And then the D here is the default. That says the default black and white. And, um, and if you ever wonder about the smudge tool here, there are no keyboard shortcuts set to that at the moment. So if you wanted that, you would have to set your own custom one. I guess Adobe figured people don't use them that much. Um, so anyway, so those are the different things. And then, of course, we've got Quick Mask, which is the Q key. 
turns on and off quick mask, and in F key, cycle screen modes. We go to full screen presentation mode and F back to normal. Another thing, if you're in the first setting here, I've got a custom keyboard, uh, custom background here. So it's the default. If you want to change it, you can select a custom color. Just give you a couple of little tips here, which, you know, if you really want to shock people, um, do that. Um, or maybe something a little bit more reasonable would be, you know, okay, here we go. St. Patrick's Day. But let's not make it so bright. Oh, man. Oh, it's bright. There we go. St. Patrick's Day. British Racing Green. Um, okay, that's wrong. All right, I'm going to stop before I get myself in trouble. Um, but when we're in here, if I hold the space bar down, I can actually move my document when I'm in that F key. When you're in, in your regular space here, you can't move the document. So if you hit the F once, notice it hides the toolbars at the top, but it enables you to move things around, full screen, and then back to our regular uh, Photoshop. So that's the different things we can do with that. All right, let's go have a look here. I'm going to go in and we're going to look at colorizing. Um, going to black and white. So there's a lot of different methods of doing black and white. Maybe at another time we'll go more in depth into this. But I'm going to show you guys the basic way of doing it. And let me just snap this on here. And by the way, you can snap it to column if you want. Or go back to that single column. All right, so... I'm going to show you one way of doing it and what you don't want to do and I will duplicate the layer just so I can show you the reason. One thing you don't want to do is just hit command shift U and that would be under the image adjustments desaturate you'll see that it's right there. So that's shift command U. If you're going for an effect like you're doing frequency separation kind of effects or, or something like that will not you know so if you're doing a special effect and you just need a black and white for an effect that's fine but if you want to convert a photo from color to black and white this is not the way to do it because it, all it does is it just basically throws away all the color information so if we go up here instead and there's a couple more ways but you know channel mixer is another way that works really well but we're not going to do channel mixer today um what we're going to do is we're just going to do the black and white and let me guys know in the comments there if you do want channel mixer maybe next week i can add that in and um and hello mike from buffalo new york okay so when i do this notice now we've got black and white now how does this look different well it's a little bit of a different conversion right but here's the big reason that we want to do the black and white filter versus just desaturation desaturation this is what you get now, if we turn this on and off, we can see there's different colors under here. See, there's green, there's red, blue. We've got these different colors. Yeah, it was uh, red and blue, of course, in the flag. It was Christmas time, so these were the Christmas ornaments. Red and green, very popular colors. All right, so if we turn this on, if we adjust the reds, watch what happens to those reds in the flag and these balls. See how we made it dark? Or we can make it white. See that? So we're adjusting the brightness of those red tones. So we can dial it in until this is, look at how great that's looking. It's looking really nice. Bringing out the detail. Now we hide this. Let's look at what other colors. We've got green. So let me turn this on. And then we go into the greens here. Look at this. We can make them black. We can make them white. We can play around and dial in those greens. And maybe there's a little cyan in there. Maybe you don't know if it's all green or cyan. You know, let's have a look there. Is that green? I mean, it's pretty green, but what about this one? It looks like it's got some yellows in there. Okay, here's another way we can do it. We can grab this little finger and click on there, and now we can lighten or darken over those colors that we actually clicked on. See that? So now you can get those exact tones how you want them. Now, let me bring the reds down just a little bit because the flag is looking really weird. We want to have a little bit of a stripe in there. All right, so that's how we can do it by clicking on there or moving these individual colors. For example, the sky. Let's click on here and let's do the sky. You know, we can darken that sky down. Look at that. Or just completely make the sky vanish. And here's another little tip too. When you guys are doing selections, and this is one for you, Rod, uh, because I know you asked about it, like cutting out trees and stuff like that. Sometimes we can go in here, use this black and white, and just completely blitz out the sky and get a really good um, 
Um, okay, no, I don't want to be recording this screen, I don't believe. That's weird. Let me move that over there, out of the way. All right, so <laughs> we can brighten or darken it, and this makes it easier to isolate areas too for making selections. So that's just an added bonus, but let's just dial this in and just make it look, you know, how do we want it? Do we want it like this? I'm going to darken it a little bit because I think it makes these ice, icicles kind of pop a little bit here. Look at that. And then so if we look at this black and white effect versus just straight conversion, see how flat and boring that looks? And then we do this one here. Look at that. Boom. See how now we've got much better um, definition between the different tones. And this is great too when you're printing into black and white. Um, you know, I don't know how many of you do any printing. And there's another question I'd love to know from you guys. What are you using Photoshop for? Are you guys mainly using it for photography? Uh, how many of you are designers? How many of you are illustrators, uh, video pros? Um, you know, let me know what you do. I'm going to imagine a lot of you are photographers, but if you don't just do photography, let me know. You know, photography and design a hybrid. It's fine. Um, let me know what you guys do, because I'm really curious. Uh, Gary, thanks for the video. You're welcome. Um, so we're getting near the end of our time here, but just drop that in. Okay, so I've got a couple of things here before we uh, finish up here. Um, don't forget to drop those comments in there. Let me know what you think would be a good tutorial for us for next week. I do two, tor two tutorials a week, every Tuesday on Photoshop Cafe. I release a on the YouTube channel and on the website. I release a tutorial, usually written and a video. Um, and that's just a you know one one tutorial. And then Thursdays, we're doing these live streams right now, every Thursday. Um, so let me know what you guys would like to see in there. And of course, when I go and once I'm done with this, in about 30 minutes, YouTube will put the replay back up. Do me a favor, jump in again and drop those comments in there. Um, not all these comments, obviously. This is us hanging out. But any ideas about what you'd like to see as those tutorials, drop those into those comments because people will be able to see those. The chat that I'm looking at here is not visible on the replay. So, um, so, so it's going to disappear after the uh, live stream. Of course, I'll take a screen capture of it and I'll post it in our Facebook group. So if you guys want to see the chat, it'll be there. But uh, just drop that in, comment in here and then just drop it in again if you don't mind in 30 minutes just so everyone knows. Also, hit that a like button uh, so people are going to see this. Also, if you haven't subscribed and check this because I've got a lot of friends of mine and I almost called one of them out. Um, I'm not going to do that, but you haven't subscribed to my channel. <laughs> Um, and a lot of people think they've subscribed, um, but just check that you have. And the reason I say that is because those notifications all need to be turned on so you know when we do these live streams. So then you'll get a notice that uh, the stream is live. Otherwise, you won't be part of that notification squad. So subscribe and turn on that. And then there's another thing people have asked about, and I'm going to share this with you guys, and um, by no means feel any obligation at all because there shouldn't be. But I did have some people ask me, um, and I'm not selling anything on here. There's not going to be a sales pitch. There's nothing like that. People have asked me. They said they wanted um, a bigger discount for this time for our premium courses at PhotoshopCafe.com. Um, and that's all I'm going to say here is I'm doing a 20%, which is our launch special. I'm bringing back all our launch specials on all our products. So it's going to be the code is wash hands. <laughs> and... That'll be live for about a week or so. So for those people that missed out on those launches, that's there for you. So anyway, guys, yeah, the time has flown. Um, so I'm going to be back next week. I hope you're all going to come back and join us next week. Looks at our little crew is growing. Thanks, guys, for coming here and, and hanging out for an hour and having a little bit of Photoshop fun. A um, little distraction from real life or Netflix. Um, also, what are you guys binging on on Netflix? Drop that into the comments too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this live stream. Um, and I'm going to hang up. And I'll just give you like maybe five minutes. You know, if you guys want to chat or whatever, I'll just leave the chat running for a little bit. Um, but the official part of this is over. So if you guys want to go, thanks. Thanks. I'll see you guys next week. See you at the cafe. 
And I'm going to hang out and look at the chat just for a little while. So the official part of this is over. And I'm going to go through this chat. So this is just unofficial. Now I'm just hanging out. All right. So what do we got here? Quickest hour of the day. All right, Donna. Thanks, uh, Colin. Stay safe in your bubbles, please. That's a New Zealand thing, right? You're in, yeah, of course. Take care, everybody. Like button is dust. Thank you, Rod. You have done a lot to make that uh, dust out of that like button. I appreciate it. Um, cars and cameras. Um, let's see. I like to explore some of the more obscure drop-down menus that are not used very often. Okay. Uh, Russ, generous discount. Thanks, Russ. Um, superb. Thanks. Thank you, Colin. Take care. Thank you, Hannah. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, using warp, puppet warp to make things. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, GNT time. All right. Um, let's have a look here. Have a great week. Thanks, Russ. I mean, uh, Rod. Joe Toxic on Netflix. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that. I might check it out. Um, you know, I've actually just started watching War of the Worlds on Epics. It's on Apple TV. It's. I, I really liked H.G. Wells' book, and I never felt I even did justice in the movies to it. Um, I'd love to really see a good movie on it. Um, but, you know, the show's kind of fun. I mean, it's really straight from the book, but, you know, uh, it's on Netflix anyway. Um, last 10 minutes got blurry. Sorry about that. The replay should be sharp, though. Um and also, so just check that out. Uh, whoop tool video, okay. Joe Exotic, all right. Haven't seen it. Um, there's no Tiger Kings. I haven't watched the Tiger King, by the way. Um, have a nice day. Wasn't using a face mask. This he's a, spreading a computer virus. <laughs> That's funny, Bull. Um, when is part two of the working from home tutorial coming out? Yeah, and that's coming out um, by this weekend, maybe Saturday at the latest. I'm going to try to get it out tomorrow, maybe Saturday where it's all the gear. I've shot it. I just have to edit it. Hey, Ralph, how are you? The like button is the thumbs up. Good to see you, Ralph Nelson. Um, I hope you're enjoying your tequila in isolation. Um... Yes, we'll do a tutorial of the transform tool, perspective tool, warp tool. Okay, good suggestions. I uh, learned a lot. Thanks, Marlene. Let's review a very good frequency separation. It's extremely important after post-processing. I know you do that very good. Well, thanks. Thanks, Freddie. Uh, Tampa, Florida. Yeah, say hi to Bruce there. Uh, there's a good guitar. How many of you guitarists? Thanks, Russ. Great session. Uh, pro photographer Fred see you next time I'll ask you a question in the comments section of the poster version of okay sure please and I will jump in and answer those by the way reloading YouTube fixes the blur it does um, okay what else I know I'm a geek uh, and you're a geek too right yep can't spell that's okay I can't spell either um, and next session a nice riff on my guitar oh, you're welcome Ralph uh, thanks, Colin. Have a good weekend. Maybe. I'll think about it. You know, as far as the guitar, we'll see. We'll see. Um, hope you're doing well, everyone out there. And I am. And Fred wants frequency separation. So, all right, guys. I am going to call it a day. Um, party is over. <laughs> and uh, see you guys next week.